Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to talk about work here from uh, both my team and, uh, as you'll notice, as the, the models kind of get increasingly integrated into, into ChatGPT and, and all of the, the big models at OpenAI, it becomes work that's really multiple teams and then totally cross-company. So. Uh, I want to give kind of a fast tour through uh, the different voice modes as we made our way to, uh, to the current systems. And as I was setting up this talk, it sort of struck me how, um, like, uh, for me, Whisper feels like ancient history. And I was like, oh, whoa, that was really just two years ago that this happened. So I just wanted to go through building up speech understanding and then speech generation, and then this process of really integrating it into ChatGPT. But I also want to give a sneak preview of, of this is where we're going. Um, so this is the model that we actually just released. I think it's about three or four weeks ago now. Um, so play the example from that. Hey, how's it going? Hey there. It's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling, though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? Hmm. From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up to shoot a video or maybe even a live stream. Yeah. In fact, we've got a new announcement to make. That's exciting. Announcements are always a big deal. Judging by the setup, it looks like it's going to be quite the professional production. Is this announcement related to OpenAI, perhaps? It is. And in fact, what if I were to say that you're related to the announcement or that you are the announcement? Me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you? All right, I'll go ahead and cut that off. But um, so I wanted to now go back uh, two years and talk about our first uh, speech recognition model, which was Whisper. Um, around that time, there were a number of other speech recognition models that were out there, um, but many of them at that point, the approach was to train them on really kind of carefully curated data sets. So you would have things like um, uh, readings of, of sort of old uh, open source books at that point, and um, just things that were like okay in the academic literature size. Um, but as soon as you then took one of those models and gave it maybe a complicated scene in a cafe or a strong accent or something like that, it was, it was clear that this was like very quickly outside of anything the model had ever seen. So what we did is we basically took uh, the GPT approach. And so if you look at the model itself, uh, I won't go into details of it all, but the, the sort of right half of the model is actually just a, a transformer, like a GPT. Um, and it's trained on this task of you know, what word is going to come next. Um, but the, the key difference here is that the model also gets to peek to the left at the audio that goes along with this text. Uh, and that's the sort of the representation down at the bottom. But over time, and the key is we gave it uh, 680,000 hours of audio to learn from. Uh, and over time, the model is able to just learn uh, an incredible diversity uh, of accents, uh, situations, even some languages. We did about 30% multilingual at that point. Um, and so I'll play uh, one of my favorite examples of what the model is able to transcribe. This is the Micro Machine Man presenting the most midget miniature motorcade of Micro Machine. Each one has dramatic details, terrific trim, precision paint jobs, plus incredible Micro Machine pocket play sets. There's a police station, fire station, restaurant, service station, and more. Perfect pocket portables to take any place. And there are many miniature play sets to play with, and each one comes with its own special edition Micro Machine vehicle. <laughs> so um, the, the neat thing with Whisper, then, we were able to uh, go ahead and open source this model. And it's been really, really fun to see what people have built on top of it. Um, we've seen examples of people... Uh, then fine-tuning the model in other languages. Um, we've seen sort of fine-tuning it to medical text, things like that. And so uh, it's been really cool, the, the community that's been uh, kind of built around that. And I think even still, it's, it's oftentimes a, a go-to model for if you want to do a, a speech transcription. But then I want to go ahead and jump to, uh, at that point, the team pivoted towards working on the opposite side of the problem, text-to-speech. And so I figured at this point I should hand it off to the model to, uh, to explain what it is. Our text-to-speech model is able to generate realistic sounding audio from only 15 seconds of any reference voice. Es könnte sogar mein, uh, mein Vortrag auf Deutsch halten, 
obwohl ich selbst kein Deutsch spreche. Leider behält es dabei meinen starken amerikanischen Akzent bei. So, um, what we did at that point, so uh, around that time, there was a really popular method of doing uh, image generation, which was working really, really well, called diffusion. And very quickly, the idea of diffusion is you take a bunch of training images, like this cat on the left, and you add uh, different amounts of noise to the image. And then you train a neural net on this task of how can you move from a picture on the right to one step to the left. So just remove a little bit of the noise. Uh, and then, of course, you do the, the deep learning, lots of data thing of, of showing you just many, many, many examples like this. And eventually, you have a model that is able to go from the all noise picture on the right and then take several steps uh, towards the left and actually generate uh, a picture out of that. Of course, we don't really want to be generating uh, cats. We want to be generating audio. Uh, but the nice thing about audio is that there's um, a very common representation that people use, which is called a spectrogram, which basically uh, on, the, on the bottom on the x-axis, you have time moving forward. And on the y-axis, you have a, uh, the frequencies. So basically, like high notes or high pitches would be up high, and then low notes, low pitches would show up down low. And so the nice thing is now, uh, you can basically take the things that are working really well in image and transport them over to audio. And like with a few tweaks, a lot of them work really, really well. Uh, so for text-to-speech, we end up having two different models kind of hooked together. We have a first diffusion model that takes in, um, it takes in the reference text that you want it to say, and it takes in a reference audio, uh, 15 seconds of someone's voice. And then uh, through diffusion generates the middle MEL spectrogram. And then a second diffusion model that takes MEL spectrogram to raw audio, which is the kind of audio that your phone or laptop or anything can play. Because obviously, uh, text to speech brings up many questions that uh, whisper and speech recognition didn't, uh, didn't bring up. We treated this model really, really differently. Um, you know, here we're in a situation where with only 15 seconds of someone's voice, you can generate a sample that sounds pretty realistic, uh, realistically like them. Um, and we're sitting there thinking like, well, there's this possibility that if we had this but had it you know, in the API or in ChatGPT, like that really makes it accessible to a lot of people really easily. And this was at the time where before, you know, obviously now there are a lot of other labs who have, who have opened up this sort of voice cloning ability. Uh, but this was a little before that. And we, we decided that this was you know, too much. Um, we, didn't, we didn't really want to open this up yet. Um, so we actually went the route of uh, limiting ChatGPT and the API to a set number of voices, and we worked with voice actors to, uh, to kind of generate uh, those reference samples. Um, and along with that, we ended up not open sourcing the TTS model. Um, the one thing that we are like slowly uh, rolling out is this idea of uh, bring your own voice through the API. And we're just trying to do it very slowly so that um, we have a process for verifying that any voice someone's bringing to it, they, they have sort of the authority to, to generate in this voice. All right, so now it starts to get more fun because now we have these pieces in place uh, and we can start to hook them together to actually have this experience of what is it like to talk to ChatGPT. Um, and <laughs> this is what I sort of fondly refer to as our hacky version because uh, it literally was just like, well, we have these separate models. Let's just like hook them all together and, uh, and see what you get. Um, and it turns out what you get is a super, super, super slow uh, talk to ChatGPT model because, you know, as we first got it going, you know, it, it was a good, like, a whisper transcript your audio, and then it hands it off to ChatGPT, which generates a text response, and then it hands it back off to the text-to-speech model to generate the audio. And, you know, 15, 20 seconds later, the, the model responds to you, which is obviously not <laughs> the experience we're going for. Um, uh, so a lot of work went into speeding up this process, kind of reducing the latency. And this is really where it became a, a huge like multiple team effort around that. Um, a, a number of them were sort of the engineering side of, of how to, to really sort of pass the data as quickly as possible. Um, some, like our own team worked on distilling the models, which um, if you remember the cat picture a few steps back, like going from noise back to the cat, um, I think that slide showed maybe four pictures, but normally that process is maybe 128 steps or something like that. And you can imagine that like having it have to go through that many steps is quite slow. There's a process of distillation where you can teach a second model to be able to do it in 
16 steps or eight steps or something like that. And so we worked on that. And um, after, <laughs> after a big effort, got the time to first sound down to maybe the two to four second range. Uh, and that's what we put out uh, in this, uh, it was around September of last year for voice mode. Um, I am not going to go through all of these, but like, I, and I could probably list even more limitations. Any of you who have played with the ChatGPT voice mode are probably well aware it, uh, if you pause for too long, it cuts you off. If uh, you, you, we didn't hook together image mode and voice mode, so you can't actually talk about an image. Um, and may, maybe the most fundamental thing is we're literally just throwing out the audio as we go, right? Like we transcribe it into text, um, but then as ChatGPT is answering, it has no access to how you said something. And for real human communication, like this is, this is super key. Um, it, it matters a lot if someone asks a question sarcastically or genuinely, or if they're mad or sad. And there are all these um, very quick decisions we make based on a person's tone of voice. Um, so we knew that we needed a, a fundamentally different approach to, uh, to how to address this problem. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, over the course of this past year, I've been working on uh, what we just released this past couple weeks, um, uh, chat GPT-40. Uh, and here is a model that uh, is our first model that fully integrates uh, text, audio, and image uh, very natively. So this is no longer we've fine-tuned in an image encoder or we've hooked together a couple models and crossed our fingers. This is very fundamentally the model understands all of these things. Um, and as part of this, you can, you can actually give it a whole sequence of things. So you can intersperse some text and audio and image and then have it generate any sequence of that. So it's really this like, native flexibility, which is really cool. And so I wanted to go ahead and play one of my uh, favorite demos. This was a, uh, a partnership between uh, OpenAI and uh, Be My Eye. So it's a, a person who's walking around blind and asking the model to, to help them navigate the world. Is the king in residence at the moment? Yes, it looks like the king is in residence right now. The royal standard flag is flying above Buckingham Palace, which is the signal that the monarch is present. How exciting to be there while the king is home. Try and tell me exactly what they're doing right now, please. Um, right now, the ducks are gently gliding across the water. They're moving in a fairly relaxed manner, not in a hurry. Occasionally, one of them will dip its head under the water, probably looking for food, and then pop back up. I even know when a taxi is coming with its orange light on. I think I'll hail it to get home. Yes, I spotted one just now. It's heading your way on the left side of the road. Get ready to wave it down. Great job hailing that taxi. It looks like you're all set to go. That's a good dog right there, leading the way into the taxi. Safe travels. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, we're very, very excited that uh, this new model now addresses so many of the limitations from before. Um, so, we, as you can see, we now have image and voice and even video now fully integrated. The time to audio is so much lower. Um, now it actually feels really, really natural. Um, and one of my favorite things is now, now we can actually interrupt the model and there will be a back and forth and the model will, you know, if there's, if there's a short interruption, it might continue on its own thing or, or it realizes you're changing topics and it'll adjust to that and there's, um, there's just a real naturalness to it. And uh, one of the things that was really funny and I've never experienced this before, but as we were trying to film some demos for this model, a number of us said, like, it's actually really hard to film a demo that captures, like, how cool it feels to talk to the model. And so I'm really excited for, uh, we'll be rolling it out soon. Right now, if you are talking to ChatGPT 40, it's, uh, it's still the old voice mode. So it's, it's the new text mode, but still the old voice mode. But we will be rolling out uh, this new voice interaction soon. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and play one last example of the, the model doing a translation thing. And um, one of my favorite things in this is that uh, uh, someone afterwards complained, and it's totally true, that the model's uh, Italian accent in this is, like, is pretty bad. It's, it's pretty American. Um, but the really, really cool thing, they don't do it in this video, but what you can actually just do is tell the model this. You can say, like, you know what, your accent's really bad. Can you do better? And it usually just sort of like laughs and apologizes, and then it actually does better. So, uh, it's really cool how responsive it is. You can, 
I don't know, you can ask it to speak like a pirate as you're debating something, or you can ask it to, uh, I don't know, put on any accent you want, all sorts of things, and it's, it's really fun that way. We asked the live audience on X to submit a few requests for what they would like us to try out here. So I will take a couple of prompts. Okay, Bot Gaskar wants to know if GPT-40 is capable of real-time translation. Mark, you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, it? let's do it. All right. yeah. I, I um, speak so Italian, so oh, we can okay, just cool. do English let's Italian. Try to do English Italian. Sure, let's do it. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare. Cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci... Come risolviamo le equazioni limiari? Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Great. It looks like it works. <laughs> All right. And anyway, thank you so much for being here. Um, happy to, to go ahead and take any questions. Thank you. Hi. So... Is there any thought to other types of audio? So, for example, if you asked ChatGPT to for music theory, uh -huh. maybe it could uh, generate some piano playing for its uh, examples and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, for now, we have really focused on, on generating voice, um, but it's certainly something that we're excited about going forward. Is, is uh, the, the base model has lots and lots of audio capabilities, so we're excited about that. Yeah. Great. Thank you, and very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm Italian, so that was fun. Uh, it sounds more like a Russian, but it's good. Um, so I was wondering about what you just said last, what do you think is happening under the hood? Because if you tell, hey, try again, and he speaks a little bit better the language, what, what do you think is actually happening under the hood? And why is it able to all of a sudden improve the quality at the, at the second try? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, it com it's coming from a number of factors, but uh, overall we have this process where we have a pre-trained model that has lots of base capabilities, and then we have a post-training step where that's where we uh, like fine-tune the model to follow the sort of behaviors, to have this assistant personality, things like that. And so uh, I think we're getting into that interaction between um, some of the post-training maybe being more English-based or, or things like that. Um, and uh, it also a little bit, uh, our voice actors themselves are uh, native English speakers, so I think it partially comes from that. Uh, sometimes it'll figure out what sort of sounds your reference voice has and then and assume that you would carry that over when you speak a foreign language. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, could you elaborate like what you guys did to uh, drastically reduce the latency from like the for two to four seconds to like in the 100 milliseconds. I'm really interested in that, thank you. Yeah, um, so, so some of this, um, a lot of it comes from, from the fact that the model is, uh, is fully natively audio. Um, so before we had to have, uh, like you're, you're literally just like passing from one model to the next and that, that incurs some slowness. Uh, there's also, um, yeah, I mean, just a, a lot of several different factors that went into that. So, all right. And anyway, thank you so much for being here.